Welcome to Mediocre Gaming, and today we're playing Deep Rock Galactic. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Zarel. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're doing Carnal Void, the deep dive for this week. And before we get to that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to be notified of all future episodes as soon as they go live. All right, so let's get back to it. Stage one of the deep dive is you killing two dreadnoughts and mining more kite. You do have two modifiers. You have exploder infestation and rich atmosphere. Exploder infestation obviously means that you're going to see a lot more exploders than you normally would in any level. Additionally, rich atmosphere means that both you and the enemies will be moving faster than normal. Uh, as a side benefit, your voice sounds like you've been sucking on helium all day. So, you're going to want to, uh, you know, you can look on the map to see where the Dreadnought Cocoon is at. Uh, that one is marked. Morkite is not marked. So you'll have to uh, keep your eyes peeled and look for the veins of Morkite as you go along. So, the interesting thing about rich atmosphere with the combination of exploders is that the exploders are going to get on top of you very very quickly because they're going to be able to move faster than normal uh, and even though you can move faster than normal you cannot dig faster than normal so if you're digging a tunnel you're going to be going at the normal rate whereas the enemies are going to come up to you much faster than normal so unless you have a way to curtail their movement, it will become more difficult uh, to get away from enemies or kite the enemies. So once you get all the more kite and you take care of the uh, dreadnought, whatever type of dreadnought you have, whether it's the lacerator, an arbalist, or the Glyphid or the Hive Guard, whatever the case may be, uh, then you can focus purely on the Morkite. If you already have the Morkite, then you can go ahead and take out the Dreadnought. More than likely, you're going to go for the Dreadnought, get a Morkite along the way, and then move deeper into the level in order to get the first stage of the deep dive completed. Now once you have completed all steps on the deep dive, you will be able to go on to the next step. Uh, and of course part of that is getting back to the drop pod. Uh, wherever they happen to put the drop pod, in my case it was kind of up in the middle of the air and you have to uh, you know figure out how to get to it. So once you get that, then you can go on to the next one. Now remember that playing with a full group of people will probably expedite, expedite the process excuse me, of getting between the different stages so it won't take as long. However, there is some difficulty uh, changes that will occur with four people versus one person. Uh, now on to the second stage you have more kite again and two alien eggs. Uh, this time you have low oxygen so you need to stay together and stay close to the mirror, mule. So you can't go too far away from the group because the group needs to have oxygen and the only way you can get it is either the mule or call down a drop pod and you don't want to uh, call down the drop pods unnecessarily and without knowing where the drop pod is going to pick you up you don't want to necessarily put drop pods in obscure locations uh, if it happens to be along the route uh, going back to the drop pod to get out that would be great uh, but you know you can't really count on it so I would say go ahead and call on a drop uh, supply drop where needed. So 250 more kite is a decent amount, so you're going to need to find as many veins as possible. 
there normally is more more kite than you need so you'll have extra veins of more kite uh, that you don't necessarily have to worry about getting uh, or finding every single vein so if you do happen to miss one it should still be okay but uh, you know just to be on the safe side I would go ahead and keep your eyes open and uh, you know especially large areas like this room make sure you're looking all the, all around and trying to uh, get the veins of morkite now once you get the two alien eggs and you're more than likely going to have one if not two or three swarms of enemies coming at you you can call in the drop pod now this is probably the most difficult part of this mission because of the low oxygen so while you're going through the stage you have to be in an kind of tightly with the group and then of course you need to stay close to the mule getting out you need to stay close to the mule because your oxygen supply will continue to decrease as the mule is going out which means that you need to be on top of it when the mule takes unexpected turns or decides to climb straight up uh, obviously you have to try to catch up as quickly as possible because you only have um, I would say 30 seconds to less than a minute of air uh, which normally isn't enough time for you to get from wherever you happen to be to wherever the drop pod happens to be so you're gonna want to run as quickly as you can and try to keep up with the mule at all points in time if you happen to be uh, come across a supply drop along the way uh, and you happen to you know have lost your way and you're not close to the mule anymore then obviously that is serendipitous but don't count on it there's a good chance of going down if you lose sight of the mule uh, because you'll run out of oxygen uh, I happened to have a supply drop on the way so that helped out uh, and then I was able to get right next to the drop pod the drop pod does have oxygen so sometimes just getting you know a little bit a third or maybe even a quarter uh, of a tank of oxygen is gonna help you get out so this is a good time to point out that even if everyone else goes down as long as one dwarf makes it out everyone goes on to the next stage and that's any stage I don't know how it affects the survival bonus at the end uh, but obviously it's not going to be quite as high or I imagine it's not going to be quite as high now the third stage and final stage has you doing a full salvage mission plus one dreadnought cocoon so you're gonna go through you're going to go ahead and uh, probably go straight for the dreadnought cocoon and check for those mini mules as you're going along so if you find the mini mule repair it get the legs back on it bring it back into service get to the dreadnought cocoon and then go ahead and take it out uh, in this particular instance I had a teammate that was not with the rest of the team and then called in a supply drop with our uh, small amount of nitra that we had um, if you have a lot of nitra you don't have to be too stingy especially on the last stage for supply drops but in my case uh, at the time we only had enough for one supply drop and then of course uh, the one guy called it in whether it was in a good spot or not doesn't matter because he was the only person there and then he went down so it really uh, put a kink in how we were playing uh, especially since I was running low on ammo 
And the other guy, I think, ended up trying to pick the guy up. So I was left dealing with both of the uh, dreadnoughts. And when you get to the point where you have basically no ammo left, it's really not great. Dreadnought wiped out. Good work, team. Objective completed. And again, it's always best to uh, stay with the group if at all possible. Uh, communicate, even if you're not on a microphone. Uh, make sure that you're using your laser pointer and pointing out, you know, either veins or places where uh, you are going, etc. Uh, so that people kind of know what's going on so they don't look around and then all of a sudden everyone's gone or you're the only one that is in a particular spot. You thought everyone was going uh, to this mini mule and they were going to the Dreadnought Cocoon instead, or what have you. So you still have to do the full salvage mission. So you have to get the two mini mules, you have to get the uplink, you have to get the fuel, and then survive until you can get out. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on social media, and thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you next time. Triangulation initiated. Do not leave the triangulation zone, or we will lose the connection. We only got one shot at this. Die like your mother did! Sticking it to the box! Platform up! Triangulation at 50%. Established. Stand by, sending in fresh fuel cells for the drop part. That warm place. Sequence will begin. Fuel cells charging. Stay close to keep them operational. We're expecting an increase in hostiles.
engineer sentry gun. Let's keep this Oi, one top. Who's maintaining this sentry gun? One Shoot it! Ready to be killed. Sentry off. Careful. Should've left my nose on the bloody spice rig. Fuel cells at 75%. You're almost there. I'm your friend! Let's keep it there. Here's something for you to play with. Engine powering up. Hold your ground. We're almost ready to pull you and the goods out. Reloading! Hard reactor spooling up. Great. Onboard mainframe booting. Calculating orbital trajectory. Powering radiation shielding. I'm the dancer. Ecom operational. Reloading. Calibrated. Drop on powered up and ready to leave. It's time to bring it all home. Get on board, we're leaving with or without you. Did I hear a rocket? That's one for the books. Retrieving escape pod. None can we the 